last class we talked about the uh, effect of uh, switching delays that is bedtime effect on the inverter output voltage waveform. Then we found that uh, the dead times are introduced to protect the devices and for a PWM operation because of the dead time it will introduce a uh, square wave voltage depending on the current direction and it, it, uh, and it will affect the output modulation index. So even though the dead time is introduced for the protection of device it will it, ha it has a ne negative effect on the output voltage and how to correct it we studied last time. Now, so far we have uh, assumed that the switching transitions switch on turn on and turn off are instantaneous and the device can take across it any uh, dv by dt voltage rise across it and any uh, current rise di by dt uh, through the device. But for many applications a practical device a semiconductor device will have a uh, limited dv by dt and di by dt. So, how to protect this device uh, during the uh, against this work that is switch protection. Here we will use for switch protection the called snubbers and how to design the snubbers we will talk about that one. So, the next uh, uh, the title of this today's lecture is power switch protection. power switch protection using snubbers. Okay. Let us uh, talk about our uh, inverter, we will talk about in the context of DC inverters the switch protection. Nowadays, uh, because of the advances in uh, semiconductor technology, we get integrated modules where the device can take care of the, uh, the it is packaged such a way it can take care of high dv by dt, high di by dt. But when we use individual uh, devices for SMBS application or for any switching function, we have to protect the do device that means we have to operate the device such a way that uh, device is operated within its dv by dt and di by dt limit. So, what is this problem? Let us analyze that one. Let us take the first uh, uh, limb of an uh, inverter. I will represent the switch as a transistor and this is the diode. And we have put the diode so that the switch can uh, conduct in both directions, both uh, direction depending on the load current. But the positive and, neg uh, the positive and negative voltage uh, at the output we are generating by switching the uh, devices top switch and the bottom device that is S1 and S2 device. But whether the transistor to conduct or the diode to conduct that depends on the load. Let's, uh, let us take the current is in this direction now. Okay. In this conduction, when S1 is on, when S1 is on, transistor will be conducting. Transistor is conducting. When S21, S21 means you are giving gate pulse to S2, but because of the current direction here, D2 will be conducting, not the transistor. Here, D2 will be conducting. Here, instead of the transistor, D2 is conducting. When D2 is conducting, S1 is off and S1 has to support the full DC link voltage VDC. Okay. Let us take a condition where we are going from S2 to S1. Now, D2 is conducting and S2 is switched off. Now, the condition is S2 is 
of and S1 is on after the that time TD. I will say after the that time. Now, what happens? It will take a finite time for the. So, now S2 is off and S1 is after the that time. So, what happens? Diode will be switched on instantaneously and S1 will start conducting. So, now here the switch S2 will block the full DC link voltage. And the conduction is transferred to transistor S1. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, let us take the condition when the uh, conduction is transferring from S1 to S2. Now, let us take the condition. The the conduction is transferred from S1 to S2. That means, transistor to D2. So, let us draw only the transistor and the diode now. This is our VDC. Okay, this is the load. Now, current direction is in this direction. The moment S1 is off, that means let us take. Till this point S1 is on, that means full load current is passing through the, this is I load, passing through the uh, transistor S1. Now, here S2 is on here or S1 is off. See, S1 is off, here the S2 on or off is not uh, getting affected because diode is conducting, D2 is conducting. So, moment S1 is off, what will happen? S1 is going to switch off, that means current will slowly decrease and come to 0. Why? The moment current is slowly decreasing, current through the D2 will slowly increase. So, current through D2, that is ID2 will slowly increase such that during this period, I load is equal to equal to I S1 plus I D2. Now, here the current is decreasing, here the current is increasing, but the moment the diode is turned on, the voltage drop across the diode is appro approximately 0.7 volts. Now, S1 has to support the full VCE. So, if you see here, the VCE voltage at this point, the voltage across S1 is VCE. Till this point, it was only saturation voltage and suddenly here the voltage will go to VCE. 
that is VDC. This is VDC. So, because diode is conducting diode voltage is only 0 0.7 and during the switch off process S1 has to support the full DC voltage that is during turn off do, uh, for the present current direction for the present current direction we will write it we will make that for the shown current direction direction during turn off the S1 transistor has to support the full DC link voltage VDC. So, what happens? There is a current through the device and the voltage across it. So, if you see the power loss during this period, that is power during this period till the commute, uh, till the switch off is completed, heavy power loss will be there. So, this will be approximately we can multiply the, this will be equal to VDC into IS1. So, PW operation, this happens at every uh, triangular frequency carrier interval. So, heavy power loss will be there. So, sometimes it can lead to device breakdown. So, how to protect the device? Here if you see the dB by dt is instantaneous, it is writing high dB by dt at this point at this point the transistor will have high dv by dt and also power loss. So, how to avoid this one? The best way to avoid this one, we should not allow the <coughs> voltage VCE to rise very fast. We want the VCE to rise very slowly till the turn off is complete. So, what is the best way slowly rising during turn off process? Put a capacitor that means we will put a capacitor across it. We will go to the next page. See here again this is our VDC, this is our transistor, then this is our D2. D2, okay. There is a diode there that we are, uh, diode is not coming into picture now. Diode is there that we are not talking about the diode. So, protect the uh, device, protect the device during this uh, turn off uh, period. This is load, current direction is like this. We will put a capacitor across this one. So, that when the uh, transistor is conducting the voltage uh, across the transistor is 0, the uh, voltage across the capacitor is 0. The moment turn off process starts, what happen? The VC will instead of going immediately like this, that is instead of VC going quickly to VDC like this, VC will slowly go during this portion, it will slowly rise and comes to VDC because of the capacitor. Why? Assume uh, S1 is the transistor is turned off and the current is coming through D2. The moment current is coming through D2, what will happen? The full VC has to come across, uh, VC has to come across the transistor. So, because of the capacitor, the full VDC will not come, ac uh, come across the uh, transistor now because the current 
has to pass through this capacitor and charge the capacitor. So, let us say the transistor is switched off and the current is trans now the current is transferred to, to the uh, capacitor. Okay. So, what happens here? The VC, VCE will slowly rise now, VCE. So, what is VCE? V, during the turn off process, VCE VC is equal to assuming the lo, uh, load is highly inductive, so that the diode current and the capacitor current, some of the diode current, uh, current are equal to load current and the current is throwing the capacitor is slowly rising. But for our analysis, let us say the current is the moment it is switched off slowly the transistor will uh, the transistor uh, current will slowly decrease. But the problem compared to the previous case immediately current will not be trans uh, transferred to the diode. That means once the S1 transistor is switched off, the current will not transfer to B2 immediately, because of the capacitor. Why? See, the capacitor voltage is 0 and diode will not conduct immediately. Because the transistor voltage, across the transistor voltage, the capacitor is not charged, capacitor voltage is 0, diode is still reverse biased. So, the diode will be forward biased when this DC link voltage is supported by or opposed by the capacitor. So, during turn off, when transistor is immediately turned off, D2 is reverse biased. bias till the capacitor C is charged to VDC. Now, what happens? Transistor is turned on slowly turning on, turning off okay? and here the transistor current will be trans instead of transferring to diode, it will be transferred to capacitor. Let us say this transfer is immediate, transistor is switched on immediately. So, immediately switched off without appearing the full DC across the CE. Now, till the uh, capacitor is charged to full VDC, the diode D2 will not contact. Till that point, diode D2 will be switched off, reverse bias. So, how to design the capacitor? Let us say the load current is highly inductive and during this uh, transfer process, the current through the capacitor is nearly constant. So, capacitor will be charged with a, we can assume the capacitor will be charged with a constant current. So, if you see here, so during this turn off process, that is during when the uh, process that the current transfer from transfer, uh, current transfer to the transistor to uh, capacitor. Approximate design, we can say the VC, all the voltage across the uh, capacitor is equal to capacitor charging say I load, the capacitor charging voltage is equal to I load into during the turn off process. So, let us say TF, turn off time. So, we will say T of for a transistor. I load into T of by 
C will be equal to V D C. So, that means current is transferred to the capacitor. We will assume the for the design of the capacitor, worst case design, the full load current is passing through the capacitor and during the turn off period, I load into T of by C is equal to V D C. For any device, there is a minimum turn off time will be there. So, during the turn off period, we will assume the capacitor is not immediately coming, it is slowly coming to V D C period. So, from this one, for a maximum load current, we can approximately design our C. So, C will be, I load maximum. Correct into T of divided by V D C. So, T of see how we can T of we can take T of should be always more than the T of minimum of the transistor. So, that to ensure that till the device is turned off completely, the uh, voltage across the device is not coming to V D C, that we can design that C. Now, this problem, turn off problem is taken care of. The switching losses, power dissipation during turn off process is uh, we have uh, somehow uh, taken care of. There is another problem happens. Now, device S1 is turned on, S1 is off, D2 is conducting, D2 is conducting. and the capacitor voltage voltage is V D C. Now, what happens when S 1 is again turned on? When S 1 is again turned on, this capacitor will quickly discharge the current into the transistor. So, sometimes this uh, this current can go because cap, uh, transistor is turned on and the resistance is very minimal and heavy current can go it can uh, again go the uh, above the uh, the peak rating of the device and current uh, and because of the heavy heavy current the transistor can again get damaged so here what is the problem now when S1 transistor is on, the capacitor will discharge by pumping very large current. current through the transistor. So, this can also spoil the devices. How to take care of this one? That means, the transistor current, see this happens every turn on, see it is a repetitive action during the PWF action. So, this repetitive current, a transistor will have a repetitive peak current. So, repetitive peak current, what are the currents? The load current plus the capacitor discharge current together should be less than the repetitive peak current of the transistor. How to avoid that one? To avoid that, to limit the current, what you have to do? You have to increase the impedance. That means, you have to put a transistor or uh, put a resistor. So, here let us, how to avoid that one? So, let us again draw the VDC. Now, we will put a see diode is there. Now, we put a resistance R, R and C. 
So we will choose R such that the transistor during turn on turn on the <coughs> current through the current the tr transistor is that is I load maximum you will take it maximum plus VDC by R should be less than I repetitive peak of the device ok. So, the R value we can decide, R should be that means if the repetitive peak is known that is from here if you see here VDC by R should be less than I repetitive peak minus I load maximum. Okay. This shows taking R to this side, R should be greater than VDC by let us take this current or some I some uh, I this current whole thing will represent as some I peak. So this should be R should be greater than VDC by I peak, okay. <coughs> See there is another problem here. We have introduced designed the capacitor so that during the turn off period, during the turn off period the capacitor should rise slowly. Now R is also in, uh, introduced. So, the time constant will increase. So, it, it will affect the switching, it will increase the switch of uh, switching of delay. So, we do not want the R to come during the uh, when the transistor S1 is turned off as before. So, how to avoid that one? This I can by put a diode like this here. So, if you put a diode like this during turn on, current will flow like this during turn off, during turn off current will flow like this, this is during turn off, this is the path during turn off. Okay. So, Another problem is also there. During turn on, this RC, so PWM operation, the turn on period of a transistor will vary. Now, So, if you oh sorry here this is during turn on, uh, this is during turn off, sorry there is a mistake here, this is during turn on and this is during turn off. That is what we explained, during turn off the capacitor should slowly rise due to the load current that time we do not want the resistance to come into picture. So, transistor is switched off current has to go through like this. When it is turned on this RC, this C will discharge through the uh, th th discharge through the resistance. So, but the problem is now the time constant is increased. So, that means because of this turn on the discharge capacitor 
discharge time constant is increased. So, what happened? For many PW applica uh, application, the turn on period of the transistor depend on the uh, sine triangle comparison. So, the, uh, we should ensure that RC should discharge completely, completely during the turn on period. That means, during the start of the turn on period itself, before the turn on ends, the RC should quickly discharge. So, how to choose the R? So, let us take approximately the standard practice is, see 5 times RC, the time constant RC or we want to 5 times RC, 5 times RC should be less than the T on minimum, that is a PWM action, T on minimum. So, the time constant is RC and 5 times RC should be less than T on minimum. This will ensure during the turn on period the capacitor will fully discharge. Okay. This shows that R should be less than T on minimum divided by phi C. So, here if you see the condition says R should be greater than VDC by IP. Here it says R should be less than T on minimum by phi C. So, we can choose an R between these two points, okay, this same. Now, another thing is, see it is discharging through the resistance, the capacitor charges capacitor charge get dissipated in R. So, we have to fix the uh, wattage, the wattage of the R, wattage of R. This is also very important. Otherwise, what will happen? We will fix the right value of the resistance, what is available, but after some time we can see slowly the uh, this uh, the wattage is not proper, the uh, resistance will get uh, heated up slowly smoke will come from there. So, we have to put the correct wattage. If you see the capacitor, what is the energy stored in the capacitor? Energy stored in the capacitor is equal to half C into V D C square. Okay. So, what is the power is equal to energy divided by time. If you see if you see here, what is time? Time is equal to 1 by F. What is the F here? F is the the cycle number of times it happens that is related to the carrier frequency 1 by Fc. So, the wattage should be is equal to half C Vd square into Fc. So, we should choose a resistance with the above value with a wattage more than this one. Let us take a typical example where Vdc is equal to 100 volts. C is equal to 0 0.02 microfarad and I load maximum is equal to 5 amperes. Let us take R is equal to 100 ohm, then how the wattage will be and the switching frequency. Let us take F is equal to 1 kilohertz operation, for this one the wattage will be 10 raise to 3 into half into 0 0.02 into 10 raise to minus 6 into 100 square. 
this will be approximating 0 0.1 watts. Okay. So, this way we can decide the transition uh, the value r 100 ohms and approximately a half watt rest of is sufficient. We can approximate this one to a half watt. Now, let us take a condition where the D 2 is conducting and we are turning on S 1. That means, let us draw the this is V D C. Our transistor turn on. I load. Now, let us take the current is flowing through like this, that is D 2 is conducting. D 2 is conducting, now you are turning on S 1. So, the condition is D 2 is and S 1 transistor is turned on. So, D 2 requires some finite time, D 2 requires some finite time to regain the uh, junction uh, charges to block the full DC voltage across D 2, to regain the junction charges to block the full DC link voltage, voltage when S 1 transistor is on. That means, if you see here, if you know the device, the transistor diode, the diode uh, it will go like this slowly and come back sound like this. During this period, this is called the reverse recovery period, the diode will regains it junction uh, blocking capability. So, now what happens at the during this period transistor is conducting, because of this reverse conductor now the conduction is transferred from diode to diode to transistor. Now, the diode is under recovery, the during this period the during this decurry period diode conduction is in the negative direction and the transistor is also in the direction. So, full DC link will be short circuited that is during reverse recovery period that is this period. period, there can be a short circuit current through the transistor S 1 and diode 2 2, there can be a heavy, heavy short circuit current. through S 1 and D 2. So, because of this carry heavy current, the transistor can get damaged. So, this heavy current that indicates a high D i by D t of the transistor has to be limited. How to limit this one? We will put a inductance here. Here we will put an inductance like this. 
okay so this inductance l will limit the di by dt so how do you design the inductance if you see any devices any device will have a di by dt limit so during this period di by dt l should support the full dc link voltage so l di by dt is equal to vdc or the now due to the we are introducing an inductance l that l should uh, take care that this di by dt should be less than the di by dt limit okay so vdc by l vdc by l should be that is a this di by should be less than the di by dt limit of the transistor now this uh, this can have an uh, another effect see during the turn off process now the current is flowing through the l and the transistor now when the transistor is turned off the current through the inductance cannot change instantaneously okay and due to the leakage path there should we should the moment the switch is turned off the current through the inductance will not come down to zero immediately because of the leach, leakage path so during this turn off process the current through the or the st stored energy through the inductance should dissipate so for that we should provide an alternate path that means we should put a diode here now when the transistor is turned off the free wheeling will happen through the even if a stored energy it is here it will free p pass through the diode now there is another problem we want the inductor should dissipate completely same like the capacitor should dissipate completely during the turn on period we want the inductor energy should completely dissipate through the free wheeling diode during the minimum turn off period that is during the minimum turn off period so how to do that one so dissipate it faster instead of diode we can put one more resistance here so we will put to dissipate so this r i is provided so that during the turn off period turn off l should fully discharge or dissipate the stored energies fully discharge l uh, discharge so the what is the turn off period for pwm operation during the turn off minimum operation also we should see that the l should discharge and ready for limit the di by dt when the next turn on comes so here also how to decide the l uh, r l we know how to some people uh, design l with uh, di by dt limit or we can also use with uh, diode recovery period so this happens during the diode recovery period we can assume the uh, current flowing through the uh, current is uh, slowly increasing through the transistor and slowly decreasing through the diode so instead of di by dt the recovery period also we can take it so during the trr period current is slowly rising from we can assume zero to the full load so trr so di by dt we can take it by i load maximum divided by trr also we can use it so best is the di by dt limit so we ensure that the di by dt limit of the transistor is never exceeded now during turn off 
So, the turn on uh, problem we have solved, now the turn off problem happens. So, let us say we will draw the device like this, okay. So, turn on problem we have solved with uh, this one, then we have the diode here, okay. Here you have the inductance, then resistance and another diode here, okay. Now the DC link is here, PDC, okay. The freewheeling diode D1 is here, okay. Here comes the S2 and B2. This should also have this, this is the load. Now, if you see here, this R dash, I will mark this one as R dash. So, we have introduced the R dash such that the L should dissipate completely within the minimum turn off minimum. So, let us take design approximately 5 into L by R dash time constant should be much less than T of minimum the T of minimum of the PWM minimum, okay. This we can decide. So, what will shows? This shows R dash, this shows, this shows R dash should be less than or equal to phi L divided by T of minimum. Okay. <coughs> now, it can create another problem also R. See, during the discharge here, transistor is turned off. During the discharge through this way, this transistor has to block the VDC plus because the discharge this, this current plus this one. So, this voltage VDC plus this voltage should never exceed the rep repetitive peak of the transistor. That means, let us take L is discharging with the full load current. Previously, when this was on, uh, L was taking the full load current. Now, when it is switched off, assuming this L is discharged through this way, transistor is assumed, we can assume transistor has quickly turned off. So, worst case design. So, I load maximum, Indu R dash plus V D C should be less than the V repetitive peak of the transistor, okay. That means, I load maximum into R dash should be less than V repetitive peak of the transistor minus V D C. Let us take as this, uh, I will take as some VC. This shows R dash should be less than VC by I load maximum. So, if you say this condition for R dash has to be well within these two values VC by a load maximum. Here also we have to find out the wattage of R. How to find out the wattage of R? See the full energy stored in the inductor has to be dissipated in the resistance R. So, if for the full energy stored, let us take the uh, full load current, half I load maximum, half L I square is the energy has to be dissipated. So, the wattage is equal to into the Fc. So, this is the wattage of the transistor. So, for discrete components, if we can take care of uh, uh, the snubber circuit design like this, we can protect the device for high PW application. So, 
but nowadays we get devices with high dB by dt, high dA by dt. But when you take discrete components to design for a switch application, if you can provide these uh, snubber circuits, many of the old textbooks we can see many design details are available for snubber rescue design or many of the uh, uh, manufacturers uh, device detail, they will give lecture notes, uh, they will give design notes, there you can see. This is one approach for designing. So, what we want to say here, the turn on process, we do not want the <laughs> high DI by DT, the device should not, the turn on should be immediate to take care of the high frequency PWM, at the same time we do not want the high DI by DT. So, we will put the inductance. The moment inductance, we should also during turn off, we should have an alternative path to dissipate it so that the minimum turn off period the inductance should be fully discharged. So, we put a resistance R dash. Now, due to the R dash, there can be a voltage uh, blocking voltage across the device during the turn off process VDC plus I load maximum into R dash. So, that we have to choose R dash for the I load maximum, we should never exceed that one. So, turn on process uh, we have taken care of the de uh, device uh, by this. Uh, R, R dash and DLS number. Now, during turn off process, we do not want the uh, capacity uh, uh, as the current slowly decreases through the transistor. We do not want uh, during the turn off, we do not want the full VDC come immediately across the uh, transistor to. So, it will have lot of power losses. So, we put the snubber uh, capacity as T such that the voltage will slowly rise to VDC. So, during the, we will ensure that the, uh, during the minimum turn off period, within the minimum turn off period, the voltage across the device will not rise uh, to VDC by uh, providing a capacitor C. And this, has, uh, this will also create another problem during turn on, capacitor will quickly discharge. So, it can go the uh, more than the repetitive peak load curve, maximum load current of the device. To limit that one, we put a uh, transistor. Uh, we put a resistor and the resistor means, so this can affect the again the charging path. So, we put a diode parallel to that one. So, it will take care of that one and RC we will choose such that during the minimum turn on period also the RC will uh, discharge completely before the minimum turn on ends and the both R and R dash wattages we have decided based on the half T V square and half L I square and also on the switching frequency. So, if you take care of that one device protection, we can take care of. These are non ideality, these are the effect due to the non ideality of the devices, min, uh, the device require minimum turn on and minimum turn off. So, how to protect the device, this you are taken here.